folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. Hope everybody's okay, and uh, love to everybody out there. <coughs> um, I'm just going to pray. Father, I thank you for this day and for your love and your grace and your care. And Father, I pray that you will be in this video uh, for your glory and your honor. Amen. Hi folks, this is Jay and I uh, hope you're okay today. And I just wanted to share with you uh, some things today. Um, I just feel like, um, you know, when there's been a storm and uh, you're in a boat and the boat tossing and turning here, there and everywhere, and then in the morning uh, after the night storm, um, you wake up in the boat and it's a hot summer's day and everything's fine. And that's how I feel today. I feel like a tremendous amount of relief. And, and I feel a lot more happier being away uh, from atheism in terms of the blogosphere, uh, Google Hangout kind of culture. Uh, I feel a lot, lot happier uh, and a lot, lot better really and I just wanted you to know that. I wanted to clear up quite a few things and I wanted to say a few other things as well. Um, uh, I just, uh, there's so much I want to say really. Um, that's my fault. But uh, I have left atheism in terms of the blog sphere. I've not made any uh, videos critiquing atheism um, since that I, I did the goodbye video. Um, I I don't know if I'll leave YouTube completely. I have been making Bible teaching videos and still scholarly videos and um, but not on this channel even though I've uploaded other people's material and some of my old material. Um, I've just made a few Bible teaching videos uh, and a few scholarly videos which are scattered around. But nothing, I've not in any way <clears throat> made anything con video concerning atheism. And in a way this video it, uh, is not about atheism really. It's just about me, my journey, my perspective, and um, that's why I'm, I'm making this video, really. I'm making the video because I feel like I've come uh, full circle. Um, I kind of feel that I've had a long journey, and I've come to the end of that journey, and I feel really happy. Uh, in a way I feel like crying because I'm happy you know I feel like crying because I'm relieved I feel like crying because um, it's like someone climbing up Mount Everest and you get to Mount Everest and, and then at the top of the mountain you look down at the scenery and you want to cry, you want to fill up because of the the view and, and in a way as I look back over the last four or five years I want to cry because I can see my journey, I can see where I came from I can see it more clearly now than I did at the time um, yeah so I'm happy so if I do cry every now and again um, you know I, I am happy I'm the happiest I've ever been so so I'm just gonna talk about things and 
you know, and uh, just share my own thoughts and and that uh, and. Uh, that's what I want to do in this video. I want to clear up some matters. I want to. I don't. I'm not. This is not trying to engage with the atheist. It 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 it's for a handful of people out there. It's this video is for a handful of people out there who who. Um, relate to me who maybe appreciate me even though you might not agree with me this video is for you really um, for the people who do believe in me the people who do trust me the people people out there who do genuinely care about me um, I know there's a handful of you <laughs> out there and so this video is for you really um, yeah I <clears throat> I had a big existential experience last night one of those kind of big ex sort of experiences and I was I went on the um, the archive channel which I'll get back to in a minute there's a, some guy collects uh, my videos and he, he's been putting old videos on that uh, like uh, my video on there uh, Gangnam Style and Shishak <laughs> stuff like that and I was looking at these videos and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I could see myself in a no, more of an objective sense and I just saw all the videos I thought flipping ain't ya wow you went from you went into some heck of a journey there, mate. And I could look at the journey in a more objective way because, um, and I've been able to do that. I know it's only been like a five days since I made that uh, goodbye video, but I've been able to look at things in a much more objective way, really. Um, and I think there's been a, a tremendous amount. Of healing um, in my life the last six seven months uh, to a year um, I think that I've come full circle and you know to be honest I don't think people um, in my own community um, I don't think in my own community people realized how how uh, broken I was you know I was pretty screwed up to be honest I was really really five years ago I was really really broken um, I really really was broken I mean I was really really on my last legs um, my brain I completely uh, seized up because of the stress because of stress because of stress it really really hard and uh, I did have um, there was two years at first two years about five years ago I was on medication um, for two years I was on medication to help me with my uh, I think really what I had was a nervous breakdown um, now I'm not playing the victim because I don't want to play I don't want to uh, I'm not trying to play the victim card because at the end of the day we have to take responsibility for ourselves uh, so I'm, I'm in no way uh, trying to play the victim card because I, I'm, I'm not interested in that I'm, I'm just interested in 
telling you my reflections about looking back over my life over the last five years and how my that's led to my interaction with atheism you, you all know the background in detail anyway but I'm just going over it because I just feel like it's a time where I'm at peace and I'm, I'm calm and I'm happy and and I just want to reflect over that story and that history um, um, I think that um, yeah so the the I was pretty pretty screwed up really um, was I was a broken man as you all know um, and it's only recently it's only now that I'm at a level a, a, a kind of level of peace a happiness a, a joy a, a, a contentment a, a, um, a level of stability um, that that is because of the work of street preaching and evangelism that that has developed um, it's principally because of that and allowing also time to heal so the measure of have allowing the brain to just heal and allowing time to do its healing work and also the positive outlet of doing the street preaching and evangelism because there's there's some good guys that I've got together with um, you know there's um, there's four at least four guys that I'm very close to and um, I really respect them you know and then there's about eight that come regularly with us and then there's even more than that and it's a good ministry because we we're going to Manchester we're going to Liverpool now but when the university is on we go to universities and we go and discuss and debate with the students and things and and I really enjoy it I really love it excuse me and all the experience that I've had with atheism has been brilliant training for street preaching and training for uh, evangelism and going on the university campuses because the atheists have taught me a lot about making sure you've got evidence making sure that you think through your issues uh, you know not all atheists but there was a group of atheists uh, on YouTube that were very very tough-minded and would hit you hard with unkind words under the comment section and whatever and I would get thousands of those a week and kinda that toughens you up so when you're street preaching um, you get a lot of flack, you get a lot of people that say things that are not kind but when, when, when I've been up against these atheists on YouTube um, I can take it on the ground on in Manchester, wherever, because um, the atheists toughen me up. So the atheists, have, in a in a funny way, have prepared me for this work that I do because I get into a lot of discussion and debates with Muslims and atheists and agnostics. When they when the atheists who are me not all of them but some of them when when I start talking about historical Jesus studies when I start talking about Hitchin, Sam Harris and Dawkins their eyes kind of pop up and they think whoa they, they're really surprised they don't expect a street preacher to have been able to have read those stuff and, and things like that so um, when I talk to people and they ask questions I'm able to deal with them in a way that would not be able to deal with them before just being a pastor and a preacher in that context you need to be a bit more you need to be um, 
you need to have, have read widely, you need to have read the arguments of opposing viewpoints when you're on the streets because people will ask you tough questions, they will um, you meet all sorts of characters from all different sorts of life and so you need you need to be uh, you need to be a person who knows what people are thinking, what 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 writers are around that they might be reading. And being with the atheist over the last five years led me to do a lot of study. I did a lot of study on the freedom of the will. Did a lot of study on Mithraism. I did a lot of study um, in topics that I enjoyed. I did do a lot of study on. Um, the kind of philosophical, theological, historical side of things I did a lot of study because I enjoy that kind of thing. The kind of scientific stuff I, I didn't do a lot of study because I, 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 it's not something that I enjoy. I don't particularly enjoy, uh, unless it's psychology or sociology, I enjoy those topics and I did study quite a bit of psychology over the last five years sociology, anything like that, I don't mind. The kind of hard science is physics, um, biology, those those are two topics that that um, that don't really interest me really. Uh, the history of ideas I enjoyed and I enjoyed studying atheist texts like Hitchens and stuff like that. Enjoyed listening to a lot of debates, a lot of lectures. Uh, if I was studying like some philosophical issue, I would I would go and listen to the latest philosophers. I would listen to their lectures and stuff like that. So I'd enjoy that. So engaging with the atheists led me to do a lot of studying that I wouldn't have done otherwise. I would have just been in my Bible, read theology books. I wouldn't have gone out of the remit as much as I did. Uh, so it stretched me. Uh, to to research more and to to reflect more in a deeper way. Um, so so in a funny way, being with the atheists. Sorry about this. Being with the atheists really helped me to prepare me for for. Um, Sorry, I, I'm try, just trying to get a bit comfortable. I, I, I like to put my foot up on there, so I'm just trying to work it out. I don't want to knock the wire over. Um, let's see. Just trying to think. Let's see if I can put it. Sorry, I'll just be two seconds. Forgive me for this. Just trying to get a bit more comfortable because I, I like to put my foot up. Let's just move the uh, thing there. There we go. Right. Excuse me. How's that? So where 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 are we going with this? Well, yeah. So that's better. Got more comfy. So being with the atheist over the years, over the last five years, really uh, pushed me back um, to do research and study in various topics. Uh, I immensely enjoyed Freedom of the Will. I uh, listened to lectures by Sam Harris and Daniel Dennett, read articles and papers, read the whole history of the Freedom of the Will. And um, No Plum 99, I think it was, made a video about it and stuff like that. So I enjoyed that. 
I, I immensely enjoyed the um, historical Jesus studies. I really got into that and the scholarship on the resurrection, as you know. Um, so in a funny way, that was a preparation for the street preaching. And it's not just like... I kind of found... I found it very difficult for the last year to in street preaching. Um, I found it difficult to try to find the right way of going about it. And I remember seeing some Muslims um, <clears throat> they had a table with books on so I took their idea about that and I I, I got a book table and I put books on and, and literature but sometimes I would get on step ladder and I would preach out loud and it was like I was trying to preach to the nation and it was too loud and it just whacked me out but now I've, I've, got, I've kind of got the right niche uh, of preaching because what I do is I just relax, I don't use the step ladder and I just preach at a tone that's more conversation and um, it's not meant to try and get everybody to hear me, I just preach so that a few can hear me and it's more relaxed and and, and, and also like the team, there's a team now, a good team that we have and, and it's really good. And that's brought a big healing to me. It's brought a big, big healing. And it's funny because when I was a pastor in a church, I, I was always frustrated, always frustrated, trying to get people to evangelize, trying to get people to preach, get out and preach, get out and evangelize. I found it extremely frustrating. And I always said I'd like to go and do it myself. So God's good in allowing me to do that, allowing me to to go out, and I easily get stressed out. Uh, difficult situations can stress me out easily, and if you're a pastor, you get you have to deal with um, pe pe people's problems. You have to deal with a lot of issues that are stressful. You might have a funeral one week, and then. Yeah, I might have to go and visit someone who's depressed another week. And for someone like me who's who's got an innate kind of depression, depressive de kind of depression that I've inherited from my, fam my, my, my family, and who easily gets stressed out, you know, it's, it's not good for me because I can get, I can, if you're doing a funeral and you, then you visit someone who's depressed, it, it kind of, if you're not, if you if you're like, got a depressive nature anyway, it'll, it can trigger off in you. So, street preaching and evangelism, I I don't have to carry those kind of stresses. It's much more free and and also it's much more variety. One week we can I can be in Manchester, another week I can be in Liverpool, another week I can be in Sheffield. Another week, I, we 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 can be at another university, you know. So things are always changing, and I like that. I like the fact that things are always changing. Um, I I think that um, I genuinely would not have made any videos against atheism if I was genuinely not concerned about some of the issues that some of the atheists were doing. I would not have gotten, even though I had motives of wanting attention, wanting to be part of a community, i.e. the atheist community, um, even though I was struggling with my own breakdown, etc., I genuinely would not have made any videos at all, even for those issues, if it weren't that there were some serious issues within the atheist camp that had to be addressed. Now I know that there are some Christians that have said to me that 
I really went after these atheists. And I did go after the atheists, there's no doubt about it. But you have to understand that it was not fueled by my brokenness, my breakdown. It was not fueled by attention, seeking attention. It was not fueled by by even wanting to be part of a community. They they were um, side issues for me. They were they were side issues. They were not as important as the main issue. The main issue was, at the time, five years ago, there was a very, very serious issue going on, serious issues going on, within the history of atheism. At that point in history, five years ago, I come in on YouTube at a time when um, a new kind of atheism was at its zenith. It was literally at its zenith. And it, it, it coincided with the backlash to 9-11, when you had the American um, two towers coming down because of the terrorists. You had the right-wing President uh, Bush um, kind of using Christianity for political purposes of going off uh, and going off to war and both the European atheist and American atheist were appalled at this and they there was a backlash and so we got people like Christopher Hitchens who, who was pushing against it you got uh, Sam Harris you got um, Dawkins and and others uh, are really, really pushing back against this this um, religious right in America. And on the back of that, on the back of that, you got people like Thunderfoot, um, Aaron Ra, The Magic Sandwich Show, non stamp collector, many, many well known atheists on YouTube. Um, in, in this kind of movement that was absolutely dead set on stripping down, breaking down this religious right in America. Um, because, number one, there was a shock that, A, religion had not disappeared in America. And two, if we don't make a stand, then this kind of jihadist kind of religious stuff that was going on, you know, that needs to be challenged as well, that kind of Islamic extremism. And in, in the midst of that, there was language that I was reading in the text that was absolutely shocking. I really was absolutely shocked at the language that Richard Dawkins was using in his books. It was a demonizing language that, to be honest, as a, a from an intellectual point of view, it was absolutely disgraceful. That same kind of language was also in Sam Harris, and it was also in Christopher Hitchens, and it was coming out in the YouTube channels of Thunderfoot and others, it was a demonizing language that was beyond democracy, it was beyond that, it was, it was, it was, it, it, it was fascist to be honest. I, I'll give you just one little example of the fascism of this kind of atheism that, that really, really I found shocking five years ago. At Reason Rally, the the vaunted uh, atheist, um, the vauntest, uh, you know, Reason Rally was something that Thunderfoot and all the atheists were all saying this is going to be the greatest meeting of atheism in the history of atheism. We're going to get so many people, we're going to have this massive meeting, 
we're going to have a great meeting of rationalism, we're going to push back religion in our country, etc. So they were all gathering, they all made the videos, Thunderfoot did his histrionics, you know, as if he was Winston Churchill of the atheist and stuff like that. And um, at the meeting, at Reason Rally, there was one meeting where Richard Dawkins um, gave, a, gave a talk. And this is a more or less quote of what he said. I'm doing this from memory, but he, he basically said, we should shame Christians for believing in the Eucharist. That's exactly what he said. We should shame Christians for believing in the U Eucharist. Now, that is not normal democratic language. That is not normal language to be using. Uh, that is fascism, basically. It really is fascism. You might not think it is, but it is. It's basically, and, and what the whole, well, about halfway through the talk, it basically saying that it was stupid to believe in the Eucharist and that when we talk to Christians, we need to shame them publicly for believing in the Eucharist. And that's what he's talked about. We need to shame them publicly. Now I was furious and I really and I mean this for all my brokenness I was absolutely furious. The, first of all the Christians in the UK had not got a clue what was going on. The Christians in, in, the, in the UK were living in their own little world of church. Maybe a few of them might go on YouTube, but the Christians in the UK were living in their own little bubble and they had no idea the kind of language which, which was the, that was being used about them. They had no idea that this kind of demonizing language was going on. And I knew the political implications of that demonizing language. You see, I'd done a play, I, I'd been writing plays, and I did a play on um, Dr. Shivago. I, I rewrote Dr. Shivago as a play, and I researched in depth the Russian Revolution. Um, if you don't believe me, I'll show you. Yeah, this is just one of many, many books. This is uh, the Russian Revolution. You know, it's a massive team of a uh, academic book. Yeah. So I, I done, I did a play on on Doctor Shivago, and I, 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 I'd researched in depth. I mean, really researched in depth the Russian Revolution. And I saw what the communists did. I saw that they killed 2,000 priests. I saw the fact that you were not allowed to bury anybody because it was a Christian symbol. I saw the fact that the language that they were using was this. Uh, religion uh, stunts people intellectual growth. We need to get them to think. And we need to educate people. So I, 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 I knew the Russian Revolution in depth. Another area that I knew in depth was uh, the history of the Second World War with concerning Bonhoeffer. I'm a bit of a, an expert in Bonhoeffer studies and um, his work on the discipleship on discipleship was uh, a book where Bonhoeffer uh, th this is a massive tomb, by the way. Uh, you know, Bonhoeffer wrote a work on discipleship. That book was to galvanize the German people to realize the danger of Nazism. That, that's what his book, Discipleship, was written. So I knew in depth this Russian Revolution history, and I knew in depth about Nazi, the, the history of Nazism through the eyes of Bonhoeffer. 
Now I know you're going to be shocked by this. I know that you were going, you're going to be shocked by this. But I, I saw immediately that history repeats itself. And I saw the kind of language that was used in the Russian Revolution against the Christians there and the kind of language that was being used against Christians in the time of Nazi Germany. I, now, I'm not suggesting it for one moment that Richard Dawkins would gas people or any atheist would gas people. I'm not suggesting for one moment that any of these militant kind of atheists will go and gas people or kill kill six million Christians like the Nazis did. I'm not suggesting that for one moment. But what I am saying is the kind of language that was being used in the Russian Revolution against Christians, the kind of language that was being used in the time of Nazism in, in terms of the church that Bonhoeffer uh, respected and tried to defend, and where he wrote um, his book Discipleship, trying to galvanize the German people to be more to stand up against this Nazism, the kind of demonizing language it was the kind of demonizing language that was coming from some of these leading militant atheists. Now there was a reason for that. If you read Dawkins' book, there, there, there was a reason for that demonizing language. And the, the reason is, if you read his book, The Dawkins Delusion, which is here, um, he talks about how feminism was able to um, kind of revive um, women's rights because of the language that it used and it was able to heighten the conscience of people to to these feminist issues and so his agenda was to in argumentation and use the use of language to heighten the co rational conscience of people so that they will be inoculated against religion so these atheists, these militant atheists, had a, a clear agenda, and that agenda was <coughs> to demonize, vilify Christianity in the public sphere. And there was a stridentness, there was an arrogance about it. To me, there was an anti intellectualism about it. And that on and, and what made me angry most of all, what really infuriated me most of all was the lack of the really the lack of intellectual backbone of Western intellectuals. I, I'm serious about this. I really, really am. You might think I'm crazy, but I'm really serious. It, what really, really infuriated me most of all was the lack of backbone from European intellectuals, academics and the media for not calling Dawkins out on it, for not calling Sam Harris out on it, for not calling Hitchens out on it, for not, uh, who, who else was there? There was Hitchens, Dawkins, Sam Harris, uh, and Daniel Dennett. And nobody, nobody really took them to task apart from Belinsky, uh, maybe one or two, uh, a couple, a few um, academics, a few news reporters, uh, a few, but they were few and far between. Nobody took them to task. Nobody challenge them about the language they were using. Once you start to demonize people, um, then it moves not only from demonization, it then moves into action. Fortunately, um, it didn't really need me to jump in there because fortunately, 
people both in America and in the UK are much more sensible than these kind of people and are much more fairer minded and so the vast majority of people I think have have more of a, a balanced view on life and and they're more open minded than and also have seen through the uh, the charade of this kind of militant atheism so fortunately it's not done the damage that they hoped it would do but at the time I didn't know that at the time I I was genuinely frightened that this demonizing language would would in the end push Christianity to the margins of Western culture so as I went on YouTube I saw this these major atheists, the language that we were using, had filtered into YouTube land. And not only had it filtered into YouTube land, it also filtered into action because I not only saw this language filtering into YouTube land, this demonizing language five years ago, there was also all this um, action that was being taken by these uh, YouTube atheists. They were engaged in what I would call intellectual terrorism and YouTube never did anything about it YouTube for, for whatever reason I don't understand why but YouTube allowed this kind of cyberbullying five years ago to go on and there were a lot of Christian apologists that at that time were bullied off YouTube they literally were bullied off YouTube And I saw this and I thought, I've had enough of this. I'm not taking this no more. So I began to verbally attack Hitchens. I began to verbally attack Dawkins. I began to verbally attack Sam Harris. And then I moved on to Thunderfoot and Aaron Ryan and all the others. And I just went for these people. Like I said, there were minor issues of seeking attention because I was hurt, seeking a community the need for a community um, and struggling with my own brokenness Th those were definitely to play also I, I like being a character um, I'd watched a, a program uh, about actors and uh, how they became famous and part of that documentary was about being a character that if you're a character as an atheist uh, not as an atheist as an actor uh, that helps your persona so I began to develop a character like a cartoon character on YouTube where I, everything I did I would exaggerate to the third to the highest degree and so people would be listening to me and go, and go is this guy for real but I was de I developed a character and I went after these people and I went after them absolutely hard I, I mean I, I ripped into these people and I absolutely I just I just went for it I, I just went with all guns blazing and over that time I, ha I literally had tens of thousands of comments from atheists 99% of them was abusive and uh, over that time there was a backlash a couple of backlashes there was a backlash concerning Christopher Hitchens. Uh, he was with he, he had a meeting with this little girl, and I made a comment it on comment on it, and there was a huge outcry, huge outcry, massive backlash on that. Uh, I got a phone call from atheist on that, uh, and in the end, it came to a point where. it was not only uh, this massive political struggle that I was doing but it was also a sad struggle within my own life there was a, a kind of nobility in the struggle but also a patheticness in the struggle there was this real genuine fight against militant atheism that I was doing I, there's no two ways about it and I do not apologize for that fight. I do not apologize 
for one moment about that fight because that fight had to be done someone had to call these people out and it might have been done in unorthodox ways it might have been done in a crazy way and politics is not my calling preaching and apologetics is but politics is not my calling but someone had to go for these people and had to point people's attention to this militant atheism that needed to be called out now as I called these people out I was also struggling and it was a pathetic struggle because you can see this in the videos you can see the brokenness of me and you can see each year and I'm getting a little bit better but you can see how I didn't respect myself you can see the struggles that I was going through the hurts and the pains that I was trying to deal with in my own life the mixed motives sometimes within my videos you can see that uh, and so you get a two source part of, of that whole story but it was definitely a, a noble political struggle against this militant atheism there's no doubt about it that's what it was all about and I was ahead of my time I was ahead of any and I really mean this I was ahead of any European intellectual or American intellectual I was ahead of my time as to what I did against the atheist on YouTube I was way ahead of anybody any cultural commentator any European intellectual any politician any philosopher anybody in the world on atheism I was ahead of the time because I would spotted something that no one else had spotted I knew where this was going I knew where culturally this was going to go and so I to save Western culture, I know you think this is crazy, but to save Western culture, I went and threw myself under a bus. I know you're going to be laughing at this, but it's true. To save Western culture, I went and threw myself under a bus. I went and took on the most radicalized atheist in the world I went and tell, took them on now you can't do that you can't take these people on without a backlash and the backlash came at Christmas the culmination of it came at Christmas I'm not going to go into details about individual people but about five or six groups of different atheist groups along with a liberal Christian group all got their heads together and all plotted to bring me down and it came down in four ways it was the what I would call the Al Capone method it was four ways they brought me down first of all they all plotted together and you can go back at Christmas and look at videos from the atheist and uh, you'll find the, the how where they were plotting together you'll see them talking about me on their shows the first thing they did was they accused me of something and would not allow me to go on their shows to answer them back so they completely alienated me but accused me this was just after the DPR Jones debate I debated DPR Jones an atheist and he was I'm not just saying it but I, dro I, I, I was so nervous for that debate I was really really nervous I mean really really nervous and I drunk uh, half a bottle of wine because I was what I was about an hour before the show I was watching come dancing uh, and there was all these people dancing and I, I drank a glass of wine I don't normally drink maybe once every blue moon I drank a glass of wine and it was calming me down so I drank another glass of drunk I drank about four glasses of wine and I was like 
I, I was almost seeing glazes in my eyes. I thought, I can't debate DPR Jones like this. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do it. So I rushed. There was about 15 minutes before the debate started. So I rushed to the um, to the uh, kettle and I put on the kettle. I, I put put the water on and then I filled uh, a full cup of coffee. I put loads of coffee in it, filled it up, drank it, drank it. I drank four cups of coffee and. Uh, so when I came up to think of me, Bible thumping wing nut came on, and I said, "Should we have a prayer?" And a prayer, and I was like, I could hardly hear him. There was echoes in my ears, and uh, so anyhow, he had to go for some reason, sort things out. And so I was calm and I was praying, and I got my notes out and everything. Oh Lord, please help me! But when it came to me doing my bit, I was like, I was like, I was like a oh, Christian apologies on speed. I was like. Boom! I was just full of coffee. Boom! And I was just off it. I was just like really going for it. It was like uh, one of these uh, American uh, preachers in the deep south, you know. But on that debate, on that debate, I used three methods, apologetic methods. I used the presuppositional method, the classical presuppositional method, not the side 10 Bruden Gate one, but I went back to the original method, which is much more sophisticated than the side 10 Bruden Gate. And I went back to Greg Banson and Van Til. Now, these two guys were trained philosophers, right? And I went back to their works, and I literally trained myself in their method. I mean, literally, I listened to everything I could get my hands on. On. I read everything I could that I could get my hands on and every day I trained myself in that method I knew it inside and out on the issue of logic especially I knew the history of the history of the logic of logic I, I, I knew Hegel Aristotle everything you needed to know about the topics that I was going to talk about using the presuppositional method I knew it I listened to all the major debates in that area etc I was absolutely prepared in that area on the minimal of fact approach I'd already been studying that for about a year and a half two years I had all I'd read all the major works on it read all the historical source material I knew that argument inside and out and then I used uh, a moral argument um, and I knew that argument inside and out. I listened to debates and discussions around the particular paper that I was going to use. So I knew my topic inside and out. And not only that, I, if you listen to the debate, if you go and listen to the DPR Jones Jason debate, you will see me debate. And you will notice a very strident, confident debater within me. You'll notice a professionalism within that debate. And that's because I listened to for weeks, I listened to week after week, every day, academic debates. I listened to loads of academic debates every day. So by the time I got to debate DPR Jones, I was a professional debater because I had listened to so many. It was in my system. And it comes out when I'm debating DPR Jones. You can see that very clearly, the professionalism. Even though I'm like, <laughs> excited because I've got five cups, four cups of coffee in me and I'm all excited. There was a professionalism there and you can see that in the question and answer. I just took the guy apart. I literally took him apart. And the atheist accused me of plagiarism. Now, normally in an academic debate, you would hand in your paper. So we didn't hand in the paper. So it was not a, a proper academic debate in that sense. There was not only the first five minutes of quotation um, within that debate, which they accused me of uh, plagiarizing. There was also um, there was countless, countless references to books and articles within that debate and quotes. Far too many to be saying it was this writer, that writer within that debate. But it, you just can't go through all the works that and be telling everybody 
from this book, from that book, from this article. You just couldn't because there was so much detailed research and information in there. So some idiot went and made a video and played the first five minutes and said, look, it's exactly the same there. And I did read uh, from Wallace uh, on um, epistemology about truth and also Wallace on um, on um, the minimal fact approach. Now the reason why I read Wallace on truth is it was it was only a few simple thoughts that he had but it was very simple and it was very effective and that's why I read it. I could have said something much more sophisticated than what he said but we're in a debate and we have to get people to clearly understand. Secondly, the minimal effect approach, he had some detailed quotes which were more helpful and more intricate than what I could have written down. But the thing is, he's well known and anybody would know that I was using him. It was like the equivalent of someone coming in a debate and reading Christopher Hitchens. People would know that it's from Christopher Hitchens. So the idea that they're saying that I plagiarized was just ridiculous. If you go under the original under the vi the original video, you will find all the uh, books articles that I refer to there. Now the thing is, normally if you you lose a debate with the atheist, they will publish the debate all over the internet. They didn't do that. They kept it quiet. They've kept that debate quiet. They've like hushed it up, they've not advertised it, they've not told everybody about it, they've kept that debate absolutely quiet. What they didn't keep quiet is their accusations of plagiarism. They pumped that up to the high hills. But if you go uh, honestly watch that debate, if you go as an honest observer, you will know and clearly see that a professional debater took DPR Jones apart. He was taken apart, absolutely taken apart, and he looked as if he was not even he was not even in my league. And the guy's never bothered with me since. He's never bothered with me since because he knows that he can't mess around, he couldn't mess around me with me. That he would get his intellectual book kicked, and he and he he absolutely lost that debate. There's no doubt about it absolutely lost it uh, uh, and it was a defining moment as far as I'm concerned for the Magic Sandwich show because the main man DPR Jones was made, I'm not I'm not just saying it DP but you were made to look an idiot mate, you were absolutely torn apart mate and you were torn apart because you underestimated your opponent because I trained every day for weeks and end I trained and I took it seriously as an academic discussion and I trained myself and I prepared myself and I worked hard and you can see in the debate how much how hard I worked because when he asked me questions I was able to answer them when I was asking him questions I was just taking him apart uh, and that's the truth of it if, if I'd lost I'd say I'd lost if I if, if, if I lost that debate I would say that I lost but I didn't lose the debate I utterly I utterly annihilated the guy and so about six groups of atheists, different channels, all got together along with the New Covenant group. And Christopher Mort was, was principally involved in this. And his exact words were, Jason used the shotgun method. In other words, I, I gave loads of different arguments. I didn't. I gave three, uh, I gave, yeah, I gave three arguments but detail in in but full of detail so it was not a shotgun argument like full of arguments like a pellets coming out all over the place no 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 it was three very simple arguments but very complex in detail the argument on logic an argument on morality and an argument on the minimal effect approach of the resurrection that's what is three arguments and uh, but very detailed in references and uh, Christopher Mort said that it was a shotgun method um, 
Dr. Jones was sat on his set here at Christmas and he was laughing at it and uh, I'm going to name names uh, nearly everybody who was everybody stuck their boot in saying uh, plagiarized and everything they didn't discuss the arguments that I made and they were detailed arguments they didn't engage with the detailed arguments of that debate they didn't go over the discussion of the debate they didn't discuss the intellectual challenges of the debate, the intellectual nuances of the debate that I brought in. I brought in one particular argument that was very, very nuanced in the moral argument and very important. Everybody brushed aside all these things and concentrated on attacking me as a person. But when they attacked me as a person, I was not able to then, I was not invited by any of these groups to go on and answer them back. And I felt so low and depressed and so isolated and so lonely because uh, Bible thumping wingnut and his crowd, they never stood up for me. They never said anything. Nobody on our side stood up for me when they were all kicking the boot in me. Nobody. And I was just broken. I was just really, really crushed, really felt isolated really fe felt pushed out of the conversation uh, and felt crushed at, because of these accusations, these false accusations because I put so much work, so much hard work into researching that debate and preparing myself for that debate and I was absolutely confident that I'd won the debate and I felt crushed, crushed because they weren't discussing the arguments they were not discussing New Covenant Group the Magic Sandwich Show, and all these different groups that stuck the boot in, they did not, uh, at Christmas, discuss the arguments. They did not discuss the arguments. They just stuck the boot in and attacked me as a person. And I was totally devastated by it. And I felt so alienated and isolated that I decided that I was going to leave. So what I did is I thought, well, if I'm going to leave, I'm going to hit them as hard as I can if I'm going to leave. And I made a video, and I just lashed out at everybody, everybody. I lashed out. And I said a few things about uh, a particular apologist, atheist apologist and his wife. And I really, really didn't know the full facts. And I really didn't mean it. But I wasn't just hitting out at them, I was hitting out at everybody. New Covenant Group, Magic Summer, I was hitting out at all of them. But this particular couple took the umbrance. Based on, I didn't understand the full facts. And all the atheist community then got in an uproar about it and said, oh, Jason's horrible saying about this couple's wife and all the rest of it. And I got a backlash. I got a guy threatening me on all my channels. Someone sent me an email to all my channels threatening me. I got phone calls threatening me. Then I ended up making a video, suicide video, saying I've committed suicide, trying to get these atheists off, off my back. Then realizing it was stupid, I took the video down within an hour. The atheists went and they'd already had an archive channel that they'd been preparing, over a thousand videos of mine. They put it on there, made, pe made people think I was, I'd done such a thing. The atheists saying, oh, we're not malicious, that's trolls, it's not us, we really care about you. They got the police to come round. Then they got, a week later, they got the doctor to see me. Half the atheists were not happy about it. I got a, a message from Ozzy's wife saying, we're not happy about what these other atheists have done. And there was this, this it went really bitter and sour from that day on. From that moment of when all of these groups gathered round and accused me of something. That was the catalyst that set all the rest of the things in motion. I did not target this person's wife. It started because all the atheists and these other groups all gathered together to try and finish me off in making these accusations where I was not allowed to answer back. And again, it all pushed away from the amazing victory that it was and 
pushed away from talking about the actual scholarly arguments that were brought to bear within that debate. All that now was pushed aside and it was all drama. It was pure, utter drama. Because if anybody knows me, I would never ever say anything about anybody who was ill. I would not say anything to them. And so I didn't know the full facts. If I'd have known the facts, I would not have said anything. But I didn't know the full facts. And so there was this massive backlash and then there was a lot of underhanded things that was done from the atheist side from a variety of people I'm not going to name names but some famous atheists not so famous atheists a lot of underhanded things from that point was done and it came in a four-pronged attack one accusations of the plagiarism two the starting of archive channels that they pretending to be me three they got then we're able to get me to get rid of because of the threats and the a bullying that they were giving me I, I got rid of some channels and one of the channels that I got rid of I lost thousands of my scholarly videos so it was plagiarism then it was archive channels that they set up about me so that they took over my public profile and then on top of that they then got me to go ri get rid of thousands of my scholarly videos and then four underhanding attacks where they were getting the police on me and in the end it, w it got so tough and difficult that in the end I had to leave and since leaving YouTube the atheist culture I've been so much happier and 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 I feel so so much better but it got to such a height and such a abusive level from these community this atheist community online from a variety of groups that I I, I had to leave for my own sanity and, I, and I've been much much happier and so basically the atheists took control of my public profile and even to this day they are in control of my public profile there is what there has been one group that have uh, an archive channel and they put their archive channel on private but there are two other atheist groups that have 1700 videos of one and a thousand videos of another of me where they've arranged it and put my old stuff on that I deleted etc all trying to discredit me but they have control of my public profile. I've DMCA'd these people. One of them sent me a threat saying, you DMCA again, and I'll go around DMCA your videos. So the guy threatened me. The, this archive channel has been involved in cyberbullying. They were the major, they were major involved in putting the suicide video up, making people think that I committed suicide. They were major involved in that. They've still kept that video up, even to this day. And, you know, totally irresponsible, allowing people to make comments that are just completely unfair and irresponsible. Um, the people that are in control of 1,700 of my videos, they, they're irresponsible people. I can't DMCA them. I pleaded with the atheist community to get them off. They didn't do that. They say, oh, it's, it's your... It's your problem, it's your responsibility, you made the videos, but it's it's dirty underhanded tactics because n nobody, no, a no atheist, no Christian has a thousand videos of, of, of Thunderfoot, a thousand videos of Arna. Nobody, no Christian has done that to any atheist, but they have done it to a Christian apologist. And they basically took control of my public profile got me to got threatened me and got rid then got me to get rid of my 2000 scholarly videos then on top of that gave me personal problems at home through the police and and basically wanted to bully me off YouTube so that they could control my public profile and discredit me
And that's what they did. And in the end, I had to leave because their tactics had worked. I, I just couldn't do any more videos against atheism anymore because of these tactics. And we, there are people like Left Coast Atheists who say, well, Jason plays, he's been playing the victim, hasn't he? Uh, and he's just playing the victim card. And Lenato saying, oh, he's playing the victim card. I'm not playing the victim card. It's just, it's a fight. It's a fight that you that those four things were done. That you accused me of plagiarism. That you I can't remember that you 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 set up these archive channels. You've set them up. They're there for people to see. It's not an it's not a imaginary. These archive channels have more control of my public profile than I do now. And that's not fair. They're my videos. I should have control of my videos. I don't have control of them. If I DMCA these people, they DMCA me. So I haven't got control. Thunderfoot has control of his videos. Aaron Ra has control of his videos. If anybody puts something of Aaron Ra up, he'll DMCA them. No one's going to turn around and say to Aaron Ra, right, I threaten you. You DMCA me, I'll DMCA you. If there are Aaron Ra's videos and he DMCA someone for using them, then he's perfectly in his rights to do so. And nobody has turned around or will turn around and say to him, right, you've DMCA'd us for copying your video, we're going to DMCA you. No, Aaron Ra has control of his videos. I don't have control of my videos. The atheist community turned around to me and threatened me and said, if you DMCA our channels when we have your videos, we will DMCA you. I was clearly threatened by the guy who runs the archive channel and other ath famous atheists backed this guy. So it was from the atheist community as far as I'm concerned. So the atheist community took control of my public profile. Okay. And some famous atheists went on a pogrom, a personal vendetta against me, where they did everything they could to break me and destroy me. And in the end, I had to call it a day. I had to say, enough's enough. And since then, I've been much happier. I've been much happier not making any videos against atheists. I've been much happier staying away from this uh, atheist culture. Uh, and I've been really, really happy. I'm just so happy but I, I I wanted also to set the record straight I, I, I you know I you, I don't want you to get away with saying that I'm playing a victim because I was not playing a victim I was a victim I was a victim of a conspiracy of at least eight atheist groups and one or two individual famous atheists who had a specific vendetta against me to destroy me and about eight groups that worked together to facilitate that 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 some of them began to see that it, it wasn't fair and some of them began to see that this was not right and they spoke out against against it but they did it privately they didn't speak out publicly but I, I, I do have Ozzy's wife's email, uh, which I could provide to show that there was a split amongst the atheist community. That uh, some, There were quite a few famous atheists who were seeing what was going on, and they, they really thought, enough's enough now, the guy's been through it. By the, you know, and all this was playing, all this kind of stuff was going on. When my auntie was in hospital dying, virtually nearly dying, and having serious operations and I had to deal with that while I had some of these atheists having a vendetta against me and also the whole of these atheist groups ganging up on me and they played these psychological games where they would talk for hours and hours on the the channels saying oh Jason's mentally ill or Jason's depressed and they would try and switch it and change it so when I'd say that these guys are persecuting me, they say, oh, look, he's mentally ill. And, and every channel, every 
program they were doing, they were just sowing seeds in the in the in the community, atheist community and Christian community. Look, this guy's mentally ill, and they were just sowing seeds because they wanted to cover up the kind of underhanded tactics that they've been get, they've been getting involved in, and so they were sowing these seeds. Oh, Jason's mentally ill, isn't he? Oh, he's a, he's a and they bring in some some guy from Manchester who knew me. And he'd be the expert who'd say, "Oh yeah, he's mentally ill. Oh, he's a he's a jackal and hide, isn't he? You know, he's, you know." And and so they played this kind of psychological warfare game where they would talk on their channels and say, "Oh, he's mentally ill, or isn't he?" And they troll it, tr go on about it for hours and hours, hours and hours. They would talk about. Jason's mental illness always made a video against atheism and it was really really you know I think some atheists got sick of it to be honest some atheists listening in got absolutely just sick to death of them talking about my men so-called mental illness yeah I've been broken I've gone through depression through a difficult time but the way they were talking about it is some kind of nutcase that needed to be in a, in a mental hospital and they were just utterly irresponsible as a community for talking like that. They should not have been talking about anybody. If somebody has a mental illness, you shouldn't be talking about it on YouTube. That That is not compassion. That is not love. That is just abuse, uh, an irresponsible abuse. Uh, well, irresponsible and abuse. So they spent hours and hours talking on their shows about Jason's mental illness and so when you googled Jason Burns what did you get you get their Google archive channel come up yeah so then you get into the archive channel that they have on me and you see a mixture of crazy videos that are deleted and a few of my apologetic videos but it gives the impression that I was some nutcase because hey presto those videos were supposed to be alongside thousands of scholarly videos that I did but hey presto they bullied me off YouTube and got rid of those thousands of scholarly videos they forced me to get rid of them because of the abuse that I got I had to pull the channel down so you go and Google Jason Burns you get this archive channel that they've set up they, they've and other archive channels and you go on and you see these crazy videos and then you have these shows that they do Jason's a nutcase so you type in Jason Burns, you see the conversations about Jason, and you see uh, the archive channels, and you think the guy's a fruit and nut case. But what you don't see is the thousands of scholarly videos that I did, which I spent hours and hours and weeks and weeks and months and months researching. You don't see them. They're gone. If you saw them, you would get a different impression. You'd say, yeah, Jason's a, a bit of a crazy dude, but look at that. He's done that scholarly video. He's done that scholarly video. You get a different impression. So they basically took full control of my public profile. And after Christmas, I was a because I'd lost my thousands of scholarly videos, I was able to uh, get back up, make some new videos, some new scholarly videos, and get some preaching videos up. And I was able to get about 5% of my public profile back. So now you can go and look around and you can see just a handful compared to what used to be of my videos. And you can get a different impression. But they're 95% in control of my public profile now. Um, and they control that as atheists. And so the atheists will say, oh, it's no good playing the victim. He's playing the victim. I ain't playing the victim. They've taken control of my public profile. They're in control of it. I'm not in control of my public profile anymore. I can't DMCA anyone. I've asked them to close down their channels. One channel, archive channel, has put things on private. There are two to three others that have not. So they're still in control of my public profile. Even though I have uh, 16 channels, um, with a few hundred videos on each channel, um, most of those videos are, are just a few of my Bible study and a few scholarly videos. There's nothing 
like it used to be. I had a full channel with 3,000 subscribers on. On Atheist Examined, I had 3,000 subscribers and I had nearly 2,000 videos. And I had to pull that channel down because of the threats and abuse that I had from the atheist community. So I lost 3,000 subscribers and I lost my 2,000 scholarly videos. My public profile overnight was decimated. I recently, a few months ago, was able to get back, get up my Atheist Examine channel again. And recently I've uploaded some videos. There's 400 videos on it. There's only about 100, 200 videos of me. The others are other scholars and preachers. And I have about 80, maybe 90, going on to 90 subscribers. That, that was, that's my main atheist profile. But at one time, it was 3,000 subscribers and it was 2,000 videos. And the views on those videos, some of them were astronomical. There was one video by Ravi Zachariah that was just astronomical in, in its viewing figures. There were some amazing, massive views on some of those videos. And it utterly decimated. And now they control the, my public profile, especially in the area of how I used to deal with atheism. They completely control that as atheists. And they did that as a community. They were all involved in that. They all supported that. And they've all maintained it even to this day. There was only one voice, Ozzy, who said we should put it we should pull them down because he needs to move on. That was the only atheist voice that came out against these archive channels. But the rest so when they say always oh, playing the victim, I'm not playing the victim. They controlled they can completely controlled those the output. And they control it to this day. You know, I'm not gonna let you get away with that. You need to be called out. That is cyberbullying to the max. And and you have to be called out on that. If you had any integrity as an atheist community, you would pull all of those archive channels down and you wouldn't do it at all. You, if you had if you had a handful of my videos and you asked permission to use the visual videos, then that is respectful and I respect that and I would give permission for that. But I in no way give permission for any atheist group to have more than five to ten of my videos. And so you've got at least three channels where you have at least a thousand seven hundred videos on one, a thousand videos on another. And you do not have my permission to do that. And if I could pull those channels down and uh, DMCA them, I would. But because you've threatened me, I can't. That's cyberbullying in my book. That's abuse, and that is picking on someone. And you got away with it, and nobody's done anything about it. Not the atheist community, not anybody has done anything about it. Those channels caused me a lot of heartache, a lot of pain. They're irresponsible. One of those channels, or two of those channels, has put up a video uh, on Islam that I pulled down. That if Al Qaeda saw those videos, my life would be in danger. But these idiots go and put the video up. Do you know? They're irresponsible. Um, and it, it, I, I am responsible for my videos. They are my videos. And so if they're my videos and I'm responsible for those videos, then I have a right to who say, who uses those videos and who doesn't use those videos. And you as an atheist community have taken that right from me and that shows me that you are a very dangerous political group who will stop at nothing to try and destroy a Christian apologist. Because if you as an atheist group had any integrity, any integrity whatsoever on YouTube, then you would put pressure on these groups to pull these archive channels down and to let me move on. Okay, I'm just saying that again because I feel that that you 
you would be up in arms if it happened to Iron Ra. If someone mirrored a channel on Iron Ra and took control of his public profile, you would all be up in arms. If 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 it was done to Thunderfoot, if it was done to him, you would all be up in arms. If it was done to Matt Delonte or Atheist Experience, it would be up you would be up in arms. You would absolutely be going nuts if it was on your side. And that's the hypocrisy of you atheists out there, is that if it was done to you, you would be going absolutely bananas. But because it's me, because I haven't got the authority or power that some of these atheist groups have, and because you, you think it's fair game of bullying another Christian apologist off YouTube, then it's fair game doesn't matter about him we'll abuse them and and so that's what you've done and I think that you have a responsibility as an atheist community to take those archive channels down I really really do and I think it's a disgrace and it and it and it's a shame and it's just and it's an absolute shame on you as an atheist community for allowing that to continue um, and you people who uh, do those archive channels, one of you sent me a threat. You've also been involved in cyberbullying. And you should pull those channels down. And you should come to me and ask me for permission whether you can put that channel up. Whether you can have those videos or not. You need to come and ask me for permission. At the moment, I don't give you permission because I don't trust you because you've been involved in causing me and my family a great deal of harm. A lot of bad things have happened, spin-offs from your channel and these channels that have been instrumental in causing me and my family harm. So you're not responsible, a responsible enough person to run a channel in my name, as far as I'm concerned. Now, if you want to be appreciation society of Jason Burns, you need to come and have a word with me. You need to talk to me about it, and you need to ask my permission. And there needs to be safeguards concerning those channels so that I know everything's going to be safe, and I'm happy uh, with the way those channels are being run. Until that time. I don't give you permission to use those channels and if anybody um, who's willing to take up the challenge for me and close these channels then um, if you can get them closed down legitimately on a legitimate for legitimate reasons if you could I'd be very grateful you would be a hero of mine um, but at the moment I'm powerless I, I don't know how to to get these channels closed down but that's another sign so basically I wanted to set the score straight there because I, I know I've gone on about this but I, I just feel that we have to set this record straight you know you have you are running the narrative about me as atheist you, you had all these shows where you talk about my mental illness you got rid of my scholarly videos, then you set up the archive channels, and so basically you presented you're presenting then a picture of me that is not a, a, a rounded picture. And you need to be called out on that. Um, you, you've done that. It's pretty, pretty serious underhanded stuff, and you, you know it, 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 it's pretty shocking. It really is shocking, and you're not going to get away with it. It meaning I'm going to tell the story, whether you like it or not. That's the story. You took control of my public profile, and that's the story, and that's what you've done. And until you get rid of the archive channels, you are still in control of the story of me. And you're still in control of my public profile. Because A, I, I, I am not making any more videos against atheism. B, 
I'm not engaging against atheism like I used to. And so I'm not able to challenge you anymore. And you're left with the channels where you've talked about my so-called mental illness and your archive channels. And you're, we're left with that, and we're left with that picture that you've given. And that's not the real picture. That's not the real Jason Burns. That's only half the Jason Burns. The other half of Jason Burns, the scholarly side, you got rid of. Yes, you got rid of. And then you presented a false Jason Burns to people. And, and people need to be called out. People need to be told about it. And I won't stop ever changing that. That that I will from time to time. As the years goes on, I will continue to speak out against it. Um, but so long as I can make live videos every now and again, then it's always, oops, the pressure is always going to be on you, not on me. There's no pressure on me anymore because when I make a video, people can see whether I am what I am or whether I am the kind of person that you're making me out to be. So I've gone on about that way too much now, so let's forget about that. So to cut to cut to, to, to cut to cut the bottom to, to just to wrap it up on that bit. Uh, basically as you can see I've got all het up a little bit. It, it um, basically um, the last since Christmas things got really bitter, really, really nasty from the atheist community. Loads of accusations that are just unbelievable that they threw out against me and loads of underhanded tactics this four-pronged attack that they did and in the end it forced me to say enough's enough and I, and I left the atheist community and I did my going away speech uh, show which I enjoyed I really enjoyed it and I just wanted to make this video because I wanted to reflect about how I have changed how um, looking back more objectively, I wanted to set a settle score straight concerning this issue of um, of the Christmas, the 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 horrendous and massive conspiracy that was against me. It there was no doubt about it. There was a conspiracy, and you you did aim to get rid of me. Uh, and in the end, I had to be go. I had to go because of the pressure that you put on me, me and my family. I had to go. Um, you know, so I I, I want to make that clear that this idea that Jason is playing the victim is just completely not true. The fact is that there was victim victimization going on since Christmas. Uh, and there's no doubt about it. You can see that. You can you can go to the atheist shows, you can listen to them talking about my mental illness, that's victimization because people are googling in Jason Burns and they find all these shows where they're talking about Jason's mental illness, so called. That is so that you can present to people a side that actually this is Jason. Once people are listening to that conversation then some people will buy into that conversation. Fortunately, some atheists see through it and think, well, they've went on about this too much. It's just ridiculous. But, but some people will see that and get a wrong impression about me. And then when you've got your archive channels where you presented all my crazy videos, they put the two together and people think this is a crazy, crazy dude. They don't take seriously the noble and the what I can only describe ahead of its time critique against the militant atheism they don't see that anymore they see a side where you did try to discredit me because of me pointing out that you are militant atheists you know um, so there we are 
So you're very, very clever people in the way you can spin things. So, you know, and, and, and I want to reiterate, I want to reiterate, I want to reiterate to the public that you will not, you, you would not even begin to understand the psychological abuse and personal abuse that was done to me and since Christmas. Um, I've not gone public with all that's happened to me. I've told a little bit to Hogtie Champ. Hogtie Champ knows a little bit. And I've proven it to him. I've shown him the evidence. some A little bit of the evidence. But I've not told the full story of what happened to me. If I told you the full story, you would not believe the kind of abuse that I've had over the last three or four months. You, you wouldn't believe how horrendous it, it, it was. I've, I've, I've not told everybody or told the full story uh, of, of, of the kind of things that you as an atheist community did to me. Um, and, and I'm telling you the truth there. And so I wanted to set that straight that you need to understand the full impact of the atheist community upon me from some sections of the atheist community was horrendous and caused me deep, 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 deep psychological pain. And that was from some of your people. Not trolls, but some of your key people and some of your groups and you as an atheist community you need to take stock of where you're at and you need to really really make sure that you change your culture um, I'm not going to name groups or individuals but you do need to take serious stock of your own side okay there are some serious serious psychological abusive issues that you have as a community that you need to change and you need to sort yourselves out uh, and and it's endemic in certain sections of the atheist community on YouTube it's deep it's dark it's pernicious and you need to go through a collective reflective process where you need to change your culture in that area because to be honest, people see it. Atheists see it. Atheists have commentated to me. They have commentated to me and have admitted to me that within your own community there is a section, not all of the community, or that you, you, you've got not the trolls, but after the trolls, there is within your community a certain section of your community that is abusive and manipulative and they're spoiling it for the rest of the atheists that are trying to do good work that are trying to do critical thinking that are trying to do really good work right they're spoiling it for the, these people and these are the groups and individuals they need to be challenged there needs to be a challenge within your community, wider community, just as the atheist had the dialogue and discussion concerning um, concerning uh, the feminism uh, issue that Thunderfoot and others debated and discussed, there does need to be an internal dialogue between atheists concerning the manipulative and the drama that is instigated on individuals and there needs to be some critical thinking and, and some um, there needs to be a, a, a something in place within the atheist community where I don't know that the, there needs to be dialogue about that within the atheist community. You, you, the, 
these groups are part of the atheist community. They have kudos. They go on the decent atheist shows, but nobody calls them out. And I think that the reason is is that these more militant kind of atheist groups uh, bully people, bully even their own groups. And 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 so I think that you've got to stand up against them. You've got to be call them out. And if it causes a split amongst atheists, then so be it. But sometimes some people have to call these people out publicly and say, "Look, enough's enough." And if it causes a split, it causes a split. But atheism will be better off for it because atheism, the the more decent atheists who do scholarly discussion and debate, will get more respect from Christians. And these other groups will just be isolated and become non-entities. But at the moment, these atheist groups that are militant, because they're sharing the platform with you who are decent atheist, people are looking on and they see you in with these other atheists. And until some atheists publicly challenge these more militant atheists, um, A, Christian, more Christian apologists are going to get abused, and B, those Christian apologists that can add something to the debate, you're going to lose. And C, um, some people are going to get hurt on both sides. That means atheists and Christians are going to get hurt. Things are going to be said which are going to hurt both sides, and that's not going to be good. So this kind of culture has to end, it has to change, and things have to move on. And, and I hope that maybe one day something will happen, a catalyst will happen, an incident, something that will spark off that, yeah, we've got to change our culture. Um, I don't think it will be done because of me, but I hope that in the future somebody, something happens. I hope it, it, it's not something really, really bad, but I, I think that something will happen which will cause a, a culture shake and a culture change within the atheist on YouTube. Um, but at the, same, at the same time, there was bound to be a backlash, and in one sense, it's fair game, because, I mean, I did hit the atheist quite hard, and so there was going to be a backlash, and I, in a way, I should be grateful that it wasn't as, as worse as it has been. But there, there was going to be a time where there was going to be a backlash, um, and I got a, a pretty hard backlash, uh, and in a way I deserve it because I did come out and attack these people. I did say, well, you know, I did I did challenge these people. So you, if you're going to challenge these people, they're going to come after you, and they came after me, and they they really took me apart. Um, so there we are. I was just shocked at the way they did it. I thought they could have done it with a bit of panache, but they didn't. They was they were quite brutal. <laughs> but there we are. Uh, enough of that now. That's in the that's in the past. I don't hold any grudges against these people. I, I just it just bugs me that they have taken control of my public profile. It, it does not me that. Uh, I don't. I, don't I, I just feel that um, I should have control of my own public profile. Thunderfoot has control of his and. Iron Rar has control of his, Magic Sandwich will have control of theirs, and I feel that I should have control of mine. I, I think that's only fair. And I've suffered enough, I've suffered a lot, and I don't think I should suffer anymore. And I think I think um, you, you've won the day, I'm not making regular videos on Atheist Examined, and you've won the battle in keeping me silent. I've done this video because I just wanted I just wanted to make sure that you understand where I'm coming from, that I, I don't agree with what you did there. Um, so that's, uh, that's that. Now I want to make some apologies. Um, I want to make four or five apologies. I want to apologise to Cat. Um, 
I know I've apologised before, but I want to apologise to Cap. Uh, I just want to say, Cap, that if you were really, well, you were really, really ill. And um, hearing what you did here at Christmas must have been really upsetting. And I just want to say to you, Cap, that I'm really, really sorry. I know I've said this before, but I just want to say it again. I'm really, really sorry. Um, I just, if I've upset you in any way in the in the past, I really didn't mean to, but I'm really sorry that I did. I want to apologise to Aaron. Ra. Um, I said Aaron Ra that you were shouting at your wife, and the way I played it, the way I said it, it was as if you were violent to your wife, and that was just. That was just below the belt, and I'm really, really sorry for that. That was not on, and I really, really apologise. Please forgive me, because that was really, really nasty. I didn't realise it at the time, but it's just not on, and it's not fair, and I'm really, really sorry about that. Uh, I want to apologise to non-stamp collector. I said uh, my exact words were, have you had... Uh, is it um, a CRB child protection policy? Have you been CRB'd? Um, that was really, really underhanded. That was really, really bad. Even though you do cartoons and maybe kids watch it, uh, that was a very, very low handed thing to say. And I I'm really sorry that I said that. I think that's unfair. Um, and I apologise for that. And also, I want to apologise to Fiona. Um, I said that you were a stalker. I said that on the basis of what someone told me. Somebody told me some information. And it was because of that information I went and said it. But I shouldn't have said it unless I'd seen it for myself. So Fiona, I'm sorry that I called you a stalker because I didn't have the facts and I shouldn't have said it unless I'd seen it myself. So I apologise for that. And I also apologise to the atheist community for any vicious or nasty things that I said that perhaps were not based on facts or, or any dishonest things that I said. There were a couple of dishonest things that I, I said, like, for example, that Thunderfoot had sent me a report, um, which was not honest. I didn't, he hadn't sent me a report. Um, I got a, an email, a message from uh, Hogtie Champ, where he, he talks about um, the whole situation that happened over Christmas. And so in my twisted view of life and internet life, I kind of convinced myself that that was a report from Thunderfall. But it was not a report from Thunderfall. And I apologize um, for that. And sometimes in the heat of battle, in the heat of discussion, in the heat of things over the years, there's a couple of things that I've twisted and, and, and not being honest and um, and I apologise for that I apologise to make it explicit if he felt that I was demonising him as a as, as a Nazi and I really can honestly say that I didn't have any implication or any any hard feelings or anything towards him concerning that but if he got the impression that I felt he was a Nazi. I really apologise for that. I didn't mean that, and I'm sorry for that. Um, so those are the areas of my faults. I think that I've made mistakes, or I, I just apologise for any vicious things that I've said, any nasty things that I've said, any unkind things that I, that I've said, and anything that that has been um, untruth and there's been like I just mentioned one but there's been one or two things that maybe I've twisted and, and not been honest about as I should have been uh, over
over the five years, we're talking about a whole five year life cycle. And I feel that I need to apologize. I need to apologize for my manner. I apologize that my manner meant on many occasions was not Christian. That I didn't talk in a Christian way. That I wasn't gracious, I wasn't kind, I wasn't loving. And that was on many, many occasions and many, many videos. And I want to apologize to atheists for not being kind, not being gracious, not being loving. And I apologize for that. Um, I apologize for putting you through some emotional issues and emotional stuff that I put you through through many of the videos that I made for upsetting a number of you and I apologize for all that as well um, so on the one hand I don't regret taking on atheism, militant atheism. I don't regret that. I feel that that needed to be called out. Uh, but at the same time I did make some mistakes. I did say things at times that were unkind. I did make some howling mistakes. I did twist the truth a couple of times. Just a couple of times. But I did twist the truth a couple of times. Part, part of that is because I was on YouTube so much you become like a cartoon character and the the, the, the lines between reality and unreality get blurred you beca I beca you become in this bubble of YouTube where it doesn't become reality you don't realize the full consequences of what you're saying at times and so I apologize for any mistakes that I've made and if I've upset anybody, I'm sorry. And if I'm, um, I'm just sorry about these things. And even to this day, I don't. I'll probably see in a few years' time. But even to this day, I don't realise the full implications of some of the things I've said. But if I have said anything that that's been hurtful, then I apologise. I'm sorry. So, um, so that's it really, I, I, I just, I, I think I wanted to do three things, I wanted to just reflect objectively about the past, how, how, how much happier I am now, and the journey that I, I went through, I wanted to set the strec record straight about this public profile issue and that I was not playing a victim and I wanted to set the record straight about apologies I wanted to make full unreserved apologies that I really really mean and I really wanted to set the record straight whether people were interested in that or not I think it's important from my end that that that's get sorted out because um, you know, it's, I, I'm a decent person. I'm, I'm a, I'm a person. I am a person of integrity. I don't, I don't lie. I don't do these things in reality in normal life. So, to, to have said things that are hurtful to people on YouTube to. I've twisted the truth on a few things then you know that's not me and um, so I want to make sure that I apologize for those things and, and, and that things are are above board so that you know I have integrity I, I, I want to be a person of integrity I don't want to be a, a person that 
that has an integrity and having integrity means you be honest about the mistakes that you've made and I've made those mistakes and I apologize for them so that's it really um, I'm gonna be like I said I'm not gonna be making um, oh I, I wanna say that I am fond of everybody all my enemies everybody I'm always fond of you all Lenator, Hogtie Champ, DPR Jones, Iron Ra, Redline, uh, Left Coast Atheist, Live Life 8072, Negation of P, uh, Essence of Thor. I could go on and on and on. And I can honestly say that I am fond of every one of you. Even you, Jim Gardner. The funny thing is with you, Jim, uh, I kind of see myself in you. You're very strong, committed to your atheism, and I'm very passionate Christianity, and so I've reacted quite strongly against you because I see myself in you, and um, so that's a compliment. So I'm fond of every one of you, um, and I miss you. I, I miss you even now, um, and I'll I will miss you. Um, Yeah, I'll miss you all. If I had my journey again, I wouldn't swap it. I'd, I'd like to do the journey. If I had the journey again, I would do it again. Um, no doubt about it. Because even though it was a crazy journey, uh, I would do it again. I wouldn't swap it. Because it was part of my journey. Um, so... That's it, really. I just wanted to set the record straight on a few issues. Uh, there might be uploads on this channel of other people's preaching. Maybe I might upload some old videos, but there's no videos. I've not made any new videos on this channel since the goodbye video, so I'm not making any new videos. This is a video that I wanted to tell my story. I wanted to reflect about the past like I've done in the future before but I wanted to just reflect about the past I wanted to tell you my story about this public profile issue and I wanted to genuinely apologize to these some of these excuse me to some of these people in the midst of the five years uh, after thousands of videos I wanted to be honest and, and put the record straight about some things and that's it really um, I don't know where I'll be on YouTube I, I I might make Bible teaching videos every now and again or I might spend a whole day doing Bible teaching I don't know uh, on YouTube um, I have a channel that called Lola, uh, Lola Preachers and that's my main base if you ever want to know what I'm doing you can go down there on Lola Preachers and if I'm feeling like the itch to make a video it won't be about atheism I'll be down on Lola Preachers and I might be tempted once in a while to have a Google Hangout um, maybe a discussion or a debate. I would love, I would absolutely love to have an academic debate every six months with atheists, with an atheist. So if there's any takers out there, if you'd like to have an academic debate with me uh, every six months, a proper academic debate, then let me know because I'd really love that. I'd love to debate you, Matt Delonte, um or someone like that. Or, or some student or some atheist at a university group I'd uh, love to do an academic debate um, so if you're interested let me know but I'll be down at Lollard Preachers and I'll be there just making preaching videos scholarly videos on theology and 
from reading this bag of wind at the moment. I think he's a bit of a bag of wind, Karl Barr, on the doctrine of the Word of God. Uh, and so I'll be sharing books and reading that I'm doing every now and again and doing preaching videos and if I feel like it. I won't be making any videos on atheism. I've not made any videos on atheism. Um, but I would like an academic debate every now and again. I would love to do that every six months or something um, with an atheist. So if you anybody's up for the an academic debate, let me know. Uh, and that's about it really. I'll be on Lollard Preachers. I'll be there um, every now and again. Maybe sometimes I might be there for a full day. If I've got a full day, I might do. Uh, I've got. I've got a few hundred sermons up there. If you see that file, and uh, I might put them up online because you've got all these videos on atheism, but there's very little of me actually preaching. I might spend a day next week or in summer just preaching all day uh, and record them and then put them on my channels. That's about it. There's no, there's not going to be anything on atheism. I'm not ever going to be doing anything like that again. So, so those days are over. Um, but I would, the only thing that I would be doing with atheism is I would love, I would absolutely love it for the opportunity to have academic debates. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're famous or not famous, but I would like to be a professional academic, a, a professional apologist. So I'd like to do some professional academic debates. So if anybody knows anybody out there, like Matt Delonte or anybody like that, if you would get in touch with me uh, and on atheism and Christianity, I'd really love it to do that. But apart from that, there'll be no videos made on atheism, um, and there haven't been since the going away video. And I'll be on Rollard Preachers um, from time to time, every now and again. Um, a public profile at the moment, I just want to keep low and just keep out of things, not get involved in any controversies or anything like that. I just want to keep out of the picture. But for those who are hardcore J fans or um, really, really kind of like me or really want to know how I'm doing or want to support me uh, with prayer or just support me and just be in there. Uh, just pop down to Lollard Preachers from time to time, see what's going down there, and you might find a, a Google Hangout open unexpectedly one evening, or you might see me preach unexpectedly, or you might see me talk about a book. And um, if you want to see me live, I'll be down there from time to time. But it, it, it the days of the way Jason Burns used to be are over now, so I hope that you can see that. And uh, so that's where we are. So, so thanks for listening. Thanks for all coming down. Um, and uh, I just wish you all the best. And um, thanks for coming down on my going away when we had the saying goodbye video. I really appreciated that. And. Um, That's it, really. Uh, love to everybody out there. Uh, that's it. So we'll see what, what comes on Lollard Preachers. If you want to come down, every now and again, I'll be preaching. Maybe open up for a Google Hangout. Um, like to talk one night on Bart Herman and textual criticism. Uh, but that's only for people who who genuinely want to engage with me. It's not going to be fighting atheism. It's not going to be adversarial. It's just going to be me chilling out with some friends who who dig me, dig what I 
what I'm about. You want to come down? You want to engage with me? Me and come down. All right. Those who want to just come down and have a a, a dig at a theist, it's not the place to be. It's just a place where uh, Jay's chilling out, doing his thing of preaching and stuff like that. So, so that's it really. It's been a, a funny five years, and that's really ultimately why I wanted to make the video. Is I feel a lot but happier and a lot lot better. It was just a really funny five years. It really, really was. A crazy five years. Well, when you come to that circle, you know when you just know that a circle's finished. That's how I feel today. I just feel that a circle has come and it's gone. And I just wanted to wrap it up. It was just a really, really strange time. I don't know why I had to go through it. But it was really, really strange. It was a really, really strange time. Um, but it's done. It's over. It's finished. I made the mistakes. But I did some good things. And it was part of my journey. And that's it now. You have to move on. There's a time to move on. And um, I'm just looking forward to moving on. I am I'm really just happier than I've ever been. I'm doing what I really enjoy. And um, I'm just really happy with that. And being out of the atheist culture of this going on Google Hangouts and all, all that, it was it was not making me happy. It, it was not it was not healthy for me. It was not making me happy at all. Uh, it, it was make it sometimes it would make me depressed. So so it's good that I'm out of it. Um, and that's it really. So, what are you doing today? What are you going to be up to today, lad? Eh? What are you going to be up to today? What are you going to be doing? I'd be interested to know what you're going to be doing today. What do you reckon of Man United getting rid of, uh, what's his name? I can't even think of his name, but the, new ma the, the old manager, Morsi. What do you think of that? Um, I think Giggs is will be a good manager, but I think uh, they'll get the Dutch guy in. I think that's what they'll do. Um, so football's been good, and all this stuff in Ukraine, uh, the Ukraine, that that Putin ain't going to stop. He's going to go all the way. I think he won't stop until he meets tanks. I think the issue with Syria is really, really sad. I just it saddens me to see what's gone on in in Syria. Beautiful country, just utterly decimated. Um, so those are the things I we should be reflecting on. Books wise, I've got loads of books that I want to read, folks. I really have. Look at that. See them? Those ones. There, yeah, there. Those are books that I've collected recently. I want to go through. I'll show you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, 
Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. His name is higher than any other. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. His name is wonderful. His name is Counselor. His name is Prince of Peace. The mighty God. Bum, 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 bum. I'll just show you a few books that I've collected over the months and I want to read. Here's a book I've been wanting to read for ages A History of British Philosophy. I've been wanting to read that for quite some time. I've had it a few weeks. I've collected Karen Armstrong books. I've been wanting to read Karen Armstrong. I don't agree with her. She's one of these modern fuzzy buzzy scholars. I've been wanting to read an article on infinite regress in philosophy. That's why I got that. St. Augustine's Confession of uh, Instruction to Disciples. Been wanting to read that. Want to read this book again? I've read it before. A History of Apologetics by uh, a Catholic scholar. Wanted to read that again. Wanted to read this, Resurrection by John Salvish Pong. He's a bishop that I don't agree with. Uh, wanted to read that. Uh, James Montgomery Boyce. Wanted to read that. Very good book on uh, the gospel. Uh, interested to read about mystics. I haven't read a lot of mystics in the Middle Ages, so wanted to read about Meister Her Urquhart. Um, Reinhold Niebuhr, very famous theology book, uh, Moral Man and Immoral Society. Uh, wanted to read that very important theology book. Uh, don't agree with the guy, but reasons to believe. Postmodern thinker, using postmodern views of language. Um, I won't agree with it, but wanted to engage with the guy. Very famous book, uh, James Barr, Fundamentalism, Oxford Academic. When I was at seminary, I had to read some of his work. I uh, wanted to read this book. Um, will not agree with it at all, but because he's an Oxford Academic and it's a very famous work, I'll be reading that. I've read some of his work before. Uh, some Keswick preachers uh, on the gospel. I want to read that. Uh, an academic work on responding to terrorism. Wanted to read that. I've had that a while. Um, the Edge of Reason, Science and Religion and Modern Society. A number of academics in there. Uh, it's all wishy-washy academics talking about religion and science. But um, some really important thinkers in there. Um, like from an atheist perspective, uh, Michael Shermer. Um, so it's a really good book to find out what people are thinking. This is a real. I've been. I, I'm looking forward to re reading this. This is. This really excites me. Um, this guy really excites me. It's called Desocialization. Uh, by Matthew Ford. Uh, this book really excites me because he's looking at the history of Western culture recently and it seems really sophisticated and really exciting to read that. Catholic theologian on fundamental moral theology and ethics, I want to read that. Some of these Catholic theologians on ethics are pretty impressive. The End of the Earth, about the history of globalization and Christianity. Um, Gunter Bergman on 
the Apostle Paul, a scholar. Um, one of my favourites, I read this book every year, by James Stewart, Heralds of God, awesome book. Um, it's on preaching, one of the best books on preaching ever. Really, really good book. I've read it before. We'll continue to read it every year, like I do. Derek Stringer, uh, preacher, uh, really lovely devotional work on Two Corinthians. Uh, good News Broadcasting Association. Go on there, listen to his sermons. And then Karl Barth, The Doctrine of God, biggest theological windbag in history, but seen as impressive from the academic theological point of view. We'll be reading this. I've been reading it. It's been a bit of a windbag book. So that's just some of the books that I'm looking forward to read now that I don't have atheism to deal with. I have to fill the big gap in my life. So one of the ways to do it is to do the reading that I wanted to do. And uh, I will, from time to time, share with you my reading. Uh, on Lollard's preachers. If you want to come down and share, I'll also, if you want, if you would like to, uh, I'll also uh, be doing Bible studies down there. If you want to come in, sit in live on a Bible study, maybe in the afternoon or something, uh, and you'd be up for that, let me know. So let me know if you're interested in sitting in a Bible study. And I'll uh, see what I can do. Um, yeah, I want to say to the Christians out there, and I, uh, <laughs> well, uh, one of the things is some of you Christians out there are a bunch of wets because at the end of the day, where where you when when one is needed, you know. Where's, where's the love when one needs at times there were some atheists actually that were more kinder to me than some of the Christians over the five years uh, so where were, the, where were the Christians secondly I want to say there were a couple of Christians on YouTube that were okay and kind and I want to thank them for the kindness uh, and appreciate that the review and I just want to say to the Christian community at the end of the day you know I'm sorry that I let you all down um, you know I, I I let you all down I made some mistakes so uh, some cases I made a fool of myself uh, and I, I let the cause of Christ down in some in many ways and um, I'm just sorry that I wasn't the best that I could have been for Jesus. And I apologize for that. And to, to everybody out there who would want to see me in a better frame of mind, I'm sorry. But at the same time, where was your love? Where was your care? You, you weren't there for me. Even if one or two people did uh, express concern uh, for me and there, there was nobody really there for me um, a couple of people did you know show that they cared there were a couple of people that showed that they cared as Christians on YouTube but at the end of the day it's just you and God at the end of the day. God's there with you and God can be trusted. But I don't, I, I, I just think from my end I should have, I, I could have been a better Christian, a lot better Christian on YouTube. And I could have been a lot better in, in the way I conducted myself. I could have done a lot more preaching and Bible studies and stuff like that. And I regret that. And I hope to put that right in the future maybe do a few Bible studies and sermons in the future they're a lot better but in the end of the day um, I'm just sorry that I let Christians down 
uh, in my conduct at times and my failure. Um, and I'm just sorry about that. I'm sorry for the things that I've said. The, the excuse me, uh, things that were not godly, like I am the leading intellectual of Europe, things like that. I said things like that, uh, tongue in cheek, just having a laugh. But if Christians are listening in, they think, "Who is this guy? Who do you think he is?" But um, I just apologise for these things and. I just want to say to the uh, Christians out there that I just wish you all the best. Uh, Richard Raspberry, uh, Bible Thumping Wingnut, Raw, Grant Campbell, and who else? Uh, Bruce Shepherd and his wife. I just wish you all the best. Um, but I think the life on YouTube is a funny life because you don't know who you're really talking to. Um, so it's very difficult to, to develop a deep relationship on YouTube because you don't really know who you're talking to. Uh, and that comes back to... Um, Richard Raspberry, I just want to say to you, Richard, that I said to you that we were, we, we were planning to do a book together, and we'd arranged to do the book together, and I decided not to, because I don't, I don't know who I'm getting involved with. When it's on the internet, you don't know who you get involved with. I could be putting my name to a book to someone. And I just don't know who that person is, and I think you're a good person. But when it's on the internet and you don't know the person, it's it's not a good thing. So I apologise to you for saying I'll write a book with you, and then I've changed my mind. And I apologise for that. But I just don't know. I don't want to be putting my name to a book, writing a book with someone, and I don't know who they are even though they might be nice on, on YouTube or whatever. So forgive me for saying I'll write a book with you and then changing the situation. Um, the fact of the matter is you just don't know who you're dealing with on YouTube. And so it's better just to leave it alone. So putting it in perspective, things move on. And it's a new day for me, and I'm happy. It's a new, new day. And I want to thank everybody in my journey. Whoever they are, I want to thank you for coming on that journey. I want to thank everybody, enemies and non-enemies. I want to thank everybody for putting up with me. I want to thank everybody um, who, who's been in this journey. And I just want to thank everybody. Uh, I hope you've had laughs, I hope you've had tears, I hope you've had a good time, you've been angry at me, you've been laughing at me, <coughs> I hope you're all okay, and I wish you all the best, and I suppose I just wanted to make this video to say, I really feel, I've, I've, <coughs> I've moved on, that there's, I've got over the hurdle, and I'm in a new sphere of life. I'm, I'm back to what I was, to who I am. <coughs> That's what I wanted to say. And I had a few hours to say it in, so I was going to say it. So, there we are. There's now some funny about folk, is there? That, there's some folk are funny, aren't they? Eh? Not weird as fork. I tell you what I like, what I, I think is really good. Have you seen that program on a Sunday night? Uh, there's a program. It's a, I forgot what it's called, but it, it's I've seen it a couple of times, and it, it's about uh, these nurses in the First World War, and there are these hospitals. They have a hospital, 
uh, in France somewhere, and they look after the soldiers. It really they put a lot of money into it in the film. Uh, I'm really enjoying that at the moment. Uh, so there we are. I've got to go now. I know I've got to go. Love to you all. Stay blessed. Enjoy the day. Alright? Just whatever happens today, enjoy it. You only get one life, so enjoy it today. Alright? And uh, if anybody wants to see me, and you want to engage with me, or talk with me, or sit in with a Bible study with me, or listen to me preach, or listen to me talk about a book, I'll be down at Lollard Preachers. That will be my base. That's where I'll pop up, alright? From time to time. My public engagement with atheism is over now, unless I'm invited to an academic debate, which I would absolutely love to do. But that's uh, up to you atheist out there if you want to engage in that. So love to you all and God bless you all. What a journey it's been. What a journey. Take care and uh, I'll leave the comment section open if anyone wants to comment. And uh, please don't say anything abusive, just chill out. And um, I'll see you down at Lollard Preaches from time to time. Okay, take care and God bless you.